Hello, I'm Holger Lerche from University of Tübingen in Germany and I was asked to give a talk about the uh, genetic influences of anticonvulsive therapy in the frame of the Merit Putman Symposium at the International Congress, uh, Epilepsy Congress in Rome uh, in 2011 um, and the whole topic was um, the state of genetics in epilepsy of this symposium. Um, the I divided my talk into three parts and uh, the first part was about pharmacogenetics. Um, there is one nice example um, concerning severe cutaneous skin reactions uh, that can um, be due to carbamazepine. And since 2004, um, we, we know that um, in the South Asian population there is a specific HAL allele that can be associated or that is associated with as um, severe cutaneous reactions. Um, this has been shown later on in Japan and also in Europe with uh, slightly different alleles. Um, and just recently, a prospective study in 5,000 patients was conducted in, in Japan, uh, in uh, Taiwan, um, where uh, people were te that had an indication for carbamazepine treatment uh, receive, uh, were, were tested for this specific associated allele and the 8% of, of the patients that had that allele were excluded to get carbamazepine. And indeed, it could be avoided that um, these patients got severe cutaneous skin reactions. So that's a very nice example that population-specific testing of HL alleles is able to prevent uh, severe allergic uh, skin reactions or other maybe other side effects. Um, the second example, and also the third one, concern both uh, genetic syndromes um, that have been described and which uh, we, s we do have therapeutic consequences. The first one concerns one of three sodium channels that are expressed in the mammalian brain, um, and this is NRV 1.1. And mutations in this gene uh, that are loss of function mutations lead to this ep epileptic syndrome. Since sodium channels generate the action potential, it, at a first glance, it seems paradoxical that um, a reduction in the number of action potentials can cause epilepsy. And the answer is that this is the sodium channel of inhibitory neurons, which can be shown either by immunohistochemistry that only path albumin positive neurons, um, so inhibitory neurons, are stained and not the excitatory ones. And second, in mouse models, uh, where mutations have been introduced into this channel, showing that there is a reduced pattern of firing in heterozygous mice compared to the wild type. So we have a loss of inhibition and the clinical consequence is that sodium channel blockers should be avoided in these patients. The second genetic example uh, concerns um, a glucose transporter uh, and that's the glucose transporter that brings glucose, the main uh, energy source of the brain across the blood-brain barrier. And there are several syndromes. The first one was, is the classical one described in 91 by De Vivo. And uh, we and others recently described other syndromes like paroxysmal exercise-induced dyskinesia on some forms of absence epilepsies um, that can be also caused by GLUT1. This has an important therapeutic consequence as well um, because we can offer these patients a therapy that circumvents glucose as energy carrier, and this is the ketogenic diet. Ketogenic diet is 80% fat. Nobody really likes to take this, but it's um, a, a very effective therapy that takes away the seizures that even can um, dramatically improve mental retardation in those patients that are only slightly retarded, that don't have a severe encephalopathy, um, and this is a very <coughs> nice example how genetics can influence therapy. Thank you for listening.